Oh yeah, I got it. I got it! Going insane on Cookie Clicker? Need something to satisfy your cravings for the golden cookie? Then you must be experiencing the Cookie Conundrum. The podcast about all things Cookie Clicker. Um, yes? Hello? Cookies! Welcome back to the Cookie Conundrum, or Cookie Conundrum, whether you want the the or not. Episode 8, recorded on October 6th, 2021. It has been a terribly long time for your host, Nathaniel, aka JBJ Blaze, within the Cookie Conundrum's bakery, which is now on Steam, has been since September 1st. 2021 and as you can see it's currently on version 2.042 and it's still clicking away so without any further ado i have to remember what all these bumpers do so without any wait we keep crunching cookies all day long i like that so, once again, crunching cookies over these past seven years, which I only recently realized is about the same amount of time, almost, that it's been since the last episode of Dexter aired, which I've been really digging into, crunching per se, because next month on the 7th, so just a little over a month from now, Dexter New Blood comes out, and because this show itself is PG, I should note that it's a very adult show, because there's a lot of violent content in there, because it's about a serial killer. So, I'll leave it at that, but in the same amount of time that it's been since that show's final 8th season, it's getting a new ninth or what have you, perhaps instead a special or event season. Yeah, it's been about seven years for it, and so has been for this podcast. And turns out there are many more updates that have gone on in between the last episode back in 2014, which I believe was actually recorded back in July. And of course, this is now October 2021. Just a month and five days-ish since the Steam release. And so, to keep things short and sweet, like a cookie eating spree, there's been finishing up high school, which I did in 2015, going through a bit of college, which lasted more or less quite a bunch of years but uh, quite a big learning experience there not to mention curb at that and been working as well so it's been a whole bunch of strange and fun crap going on in all of those years but in other things what's been going on is just two days ago this is so not only has this podcast skipped so many updates of the cookie conundrum which i'll be covering cookie clicker i mean which i'll be covering in the next segment there have also been crap where was i oh yes there's been one timeline of a Windows version that's gone on since then. Windows 10. Windows 11 is out now, unless you're not one of the lucky few who either have been selected for the in-place upgrade, or of course reformatting if that's more your thing, or the other option, which I think is basically how I managed to get into Windows 11 was the part where you can also step into the insider program download the beta and next thing i knew 
was actually the day that I got the beta was the same day Microsoft went, you know what, we'll release this right meow. And so they did. And so far I'm liking almost every bit of Windows 11 except for the start menu, which I do believe is a big step backwards for Microsoft because you're going from the live tiles of Windows 8 and 8.1 and then of course 10 which smartly did a mixture of the live tiles and then the normal Windows XP type stuff to basically back to how XP did it which I mean it's not awful there's an example of that oh with a bunch of these but yeah that's basically about it to the start menu with a recommended section as you saw or may not have seen in the audio version but basically there's all the pinned apps and then you've got the recommended which is basically anything you've used in the past or maybe you have just started using and the get started button but so far it's actually pretty good works mostly fluidly especially after a good reboot but without getting into any further of a windows 11 review because that's not what this is for crunching into i've still got a bunch of games in a black log of those to complete and crap this week's going to be adding Oh, about a couple or more, especially this whole month, being that tonight is the Far Cry 6 release, which I could not be more excited for because Giancarlo Esposito plays the main villain, Anton Castillo, and he is one of the best bloody villain actors ever on television. And I mean, that's besides the likes of, I guess I'll put it simply as other actors who've appeared in Breaking Bad, which I also finally finished in the past many years. And of course, Better Call Saul's a thing now. But more to the point, so that's coming out. And then there's, as you may have seen there, Back for Blood is coming out actually next week, as well as... A little more friendly towards all audiences, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl, which is basically a Nickelodeon take on Super Smash Brothers. And, of course, the thing that I'm liking most about it is the part where you've got the Avatar and the Legend of Korra characters. So, actually, just two from the one and Korra from the other. And being a fan of both shows... I could not be more excited to finally do some bending in that game. And here we've got a frenzy going on. Time 7 for about a minute or more within the game itself. And yeah, besides all that, just also a bunch of TV shows and movies going around that I still have yet to get to, especially in this month of Halloween. There are so many horror movies that I've missed and going through this docu-series on AMC because I've been watching so much of that. Holy crap, I... There are so many things I've checked into in the past few that I would never have had the chance to even mention on the show. But, yeah. I, I'm finding out there's so much I've missed over the years because I put my time into other things in my playtime. Besides work, of course. Or what used to be schooling. So, anyways, without any further ado, oh, and I have finally passed a quarter of my life, so I hope it's at least a quarter. I have yet to find out, and I won't be finding out for many more years to come, so by God, I hope. Anyways, without any further ado, I think it's time to take a turn back with a little bit of time. So, this 
segment is going to be lengthy because there is so much that has gone on in these past 2,956 days as of this recording. According to Legacy, that's how long it's been since I started my Clicky Clicker run. And there have been so many bloody updates since all over these past years. So I'm going to see if I can't run through them all in one gulp. And I've just got to figure out which one that is going to be. And I think that is starting with... Hold on. I've got to check a little something here on the side to help jog my memory. Because it is not working in full force quite yet. So... Let's see. July 2014, again, was the l most previous episode. So I guess I can only start from Legacy Beta Part 1, which was August 25th. Three new buildings, price and s cookies per second curves revamped, as well as CPS calculations revamped. Cookie upgrades now stack multiplicatively. Multiplicatively, I think I said that right. It's like eligible or inevitable, which are funny enough two E words. They both start with E that I always have to repeat to myself to make sure I always get the pronunciation right. And it kind of bugs me that sometimes I struggle with that. <laughs> Anyways, prestige system redone from scratch with a whole new upgrade tree. Added some general polish, which brings things over to Wikipedia with a Tadouz Katzribiba. Sorry for most likely butchering that name, but oh well. It's Polish. Tons of other miscellaneous fixes and additions. And of course, Cookie Flicker is now one year old. Holy crap, I missed the first birthday of this game. I can't believe that, but maybe I can. Thank you guys for all the support. Note, this is a beta. You are likely to encounter bugs and oversights. Feel free to send me feedback if you find something fishy in red text. Next up, from December 20th, 2015, so in the next year, Legacy Beta Part 2, existing beta saves have been wiped due to format inconsistencies and just plain broken balance. You'll have to start over from scratch, which will allow you to fully experience the update and find all the awful little bugs that no doubt plague it. As well as importing save from the live version is also fine. In the red text, we took so long to make this update. Cookie Clicker turned two years old in the meantime. Hooray! Another birthday I missed. Thank God this ain't my own kid. Because I'd feel so ashamed. <laughs> Might feel like a certain character out of a Netflix show. Wow, I got an achievement called Click Click Chasmic. I thought that. Well, I guess it's Click Asmint Asmic, and not Click Gasmic, because that would have quite a not connotation to it. Oh, there it is, right there. It's on the bottom of my screen here where they always show the achievements. Anywho, heaps of new upgrades and achievements, as I may have already said, fixed a whole bunch of bugs, did a lot of rebalancing, reworked heavenly chips and heavenly cookies, still experimenting, we'll probably rebalance things later. You may now unlock a dragon friend. I did not know that was possible. Switches and season triggers now have their own store section. Control S and Control O now save the game and open the import menu respectively. Holy crap. That's true. It does save. I just tested it. Added some new quick sounds. Minus the new part. Just as a test. A couple more options. <laughs> and even more miscellaneous changes and additions. So fast forwarding to into the next year. Not quite a full year. February 3rd, 2016. Legacy Beta Part 3. Not all bugs have been fixed, but everything should be much less broken in red. 
And so now he's got these sorted by additions, a few more achievements, new option for neat, but slow CSS effects disabled by default for a new, rather less grating clicky sound enabled by default. The other was disabled if I didn't say that clearly. And then to bring back the boxes around icons in the stats screen. And new buttons for saving and loading your game to a text file. Which, of course, now you can save this in the Steam Cloud. So, now to changes. Early game should be a bit faster and very late game was kindly asked to tone, down, tone it down a tad. Dragonflight should be somewhat less ridiculously overpowered. Please let me know if the rebalancing was too heavy or not heavy enough. Santa and Easter upgrades now depend on Santa level and amount of eggs owned. I hope one doesn't mind that sound. Might kill the dead noise. The dead air per se. Instead of costing several minutes worth of cookies per second or clicks per second. I don't remember which one it is. Also, cookie upgrades now stack multiplicatively rather than it additively. Golden Switch now gives 50% more or plus CPS and Residual Luck is plus 10% CPS per cookie upgrade. Golden cookie upgrade that is. Up from plus 25 or or and plus 1% respectively. Lucky cookies and cookie chain payouts have been modified a bit, possibly for the better. Who knows? Lucky cookies have been covered. Wrinklers had previously been reduced to a minimum of 8, 10 with a heavenly upgrade, but now are back to 10, 12 with the upgrade. An ascension now only counts for achievement purposes if you earned at least one prestige level from it. The emblematic cookie clicker font, Tavoon, was bugged in Firefox and has been replaced with a new font, Merryweather. The mysterious wrinkly creature is now even rarer, but has a shadow achievement tied to it. Prestige now grants plus one cookie per second, click per second, I don't know, per level as intended, instead of 100% plus on both. Heavenly chips should no longer add up like crazy when you ascend. Upgrades into source should no longer randomly go unsorted. Window can be resized to any size again. The stats and options buttons have been swapped again. The cookie sound should be somewhat clearer. That doesn't sound like the golden cookie though. The ascend screen should be less CPU hungry. Okay. So, wow. Again, there are so flipping many updates. A part of me doesn't even want to have to cover all of these in one flipping episode because there's so bloody many so i'm going to just keep wasting time if i don't get to them anyways so only five days later is legacy everything that was implemented during the la the almost two year long beta has been added to the live game to recap three new buildings banks temples and wizard towers these have been added in between existing buildings and as such, may disrupt some building related achievements. The ascension system has been redone from scratch with a new heavenly upgrade tree, mysterious new features such as angel powered offline progression, challenge runs, the cookie dragon. Sounds have been added, can be disabled in the options. Heaps of rebalancing and bug fixes, a couple more upgrades and achievements, probably. Fresh new options to further customize your cookie clicking experience. Quality of life improvements such as better bulk buy, better switches, etc. Added some general polish, which links to Florian Siwiki. Another. Oh, wow. General polish or polish? Now I'm confused. Now I'm catching on. Tons of other little things we can't even remember right now. <laughs> Missed the old version? Your old save was automatically exported 
here, which is version 10466. One it's not really a hundred type number. Anyways, oh, there's a golden cookie. Oh, I get it. Duh. Okay. Anyways, I now get what the golden cookie sound is, which just sounded, sounds angelic. July 15th, 2017, the spiritual update. Implemented sugar lumps, which start coalescing if you've ascended at least once and can be... Okay, so I have maybe ascended at least once. I'm not sure, because I'm getting these sugar lumps, such as the one I've harvested while I was away and can be used as currency for special things. Buildings can now level up by using sugar lumps in the main building's display, permanently boosting their CPS. Added two new features unlocked by leveling up their associated buildings, temples, and wizard towers. More building-related minigames will be implemented in the future. Active buffs are now saved. The background selector upgrade is now functional. The top menu no longer scrolls with the rest. Time spans are written nicer. Dragon fights now tend to supersede click frenzies. You will rarely have both at the same time. Some old bugs were phased out and replaced by new ones. And I guess it actually came before that other update. So I'm not, I haven't caught on to that there are major and minor updates, I think is what the difference between these headings are. So blue headings and white headings july 24th 2016 so going back to the previous year golden cookies overhaul golden golden cookies and reindeer now follow a new system involving explicitly divined buffs a bunch of new golden cookie effects have been added cps gains from eggs are now multiplicative i keep stumbling on that word a bit Shiny wrinkles are now saved. Reindeer have been rebalanced, oh, ever so slightly. Added a new cookie upgrade near the root of the heavenly upgrade tree. This is intended to boost early accessions and speed up the game as a whole. Due to EU legislation, implemented a warning language regarding browser cookies. <laughs> Do understand that the irony is not lost on us. <laughs> that is funny. I love it though when a developer is willing to be humorous with updates in the text. Now for August 8th, 2017, four more years with a new building, Chance Makers, new milk, new kittens, new Dragonora, new cookie, new upgrade tier. Buffs no longer affect offline CPS, Godzamox Hunger will m was made less potent. This is a nerf, very sorry. Grimoire spell costs and maximum magic work differently. Spontaneous edifice have been reworked. Changed unlock level levels and prices for some cursor upgrades. Fixed buggy pantheon, pantheon slots, hopefully. Fixed legacy started a long while ago, showing as a few seconds ago. Cookie clicker just turned four. Thank you for sticking with us this long. <laughs> so once again, two more birthdays I missed. No surprise there. February 24th, 2018, sugar coating. Added link to official Discord server, which I don't think I'm a part of. Maybe I am, I don't remember if I am or not. I'll join for safety's sake, right meow. Okay, there we go. That's all done, yo. Should've probably joined it sooner. Maybe even to promote this very show, which I'll be talking about how you can help with that later on, if you would so wish to. Felt weird about pushing an update without content, so I did a handful of new cookies. I did three new heavenly upgrades. Torch numbers should now be displayed up to what the crap of a type of number is that? Pardon me, let's read this together. Novemnagintilians. I'm not going to repeat that. Cookie chains no longer spawn from the force the hand of fate spell. 
bigger, better cookie clicker content coming later this year. So I hope. And temple of mine is now level 70. Cool. Trying to get everything in the 10 so I can just buy 10 of each thing. Anyways, now for August 4, August, no, April 18th, 2018, your garden variety update. I did the garden, a mini game unlocked by having at least level 1 farms. I did a new, I did a little arrow and a blinky label to signal the game has updated since you last played it. Hi! New cookies, milk flavors and achievements, sugar lamps lumps are now unlocked whether you've baked at least a billion cookies instead of your first ascension sugar lump type now saves correctly mini game sugar lump refills can now be done every 15 minutes timer shared across all mini games cps achievements now have steeper requirements cookies now last five percent shorter for every other golden cookie on the screen the game now remembers which mini games are closed or open Added a pop-up that shows when a season starts, so people won't be so confused about the game looking weird today. Permanent upgrade slots now show a tooltip for the selected upgrade. Finally fixed the save corruption bug. Hopefully. Now to some slightly more or less smaller updates, including April 19th, so just the next day, Garden Patch. Upgrades dropped by garden plants now stay unlocked forever, but drop more, much more rarely. Garden sugar lump now, er, refill now also makes plants spread and mutate three times more during the bonus tick. A few new upgrades, a couple bug fixes and rephrasing. April 20th, 2018, so, so close to Earth Day, reading out some bugs. Golden Clovers and Wrinkle Gills should spawn a bit more often. Cronerice or Cronerus. Hopefully the former I got right. Mature is a lot sooner. Mature Elder Wards stay mature after reloading. Garden Interface occupies space more intelligently. Seed Price Displays should be better behaved with short numbers disabled. Another golden cookie. Not part of the update, I'm just saying that's in my game here. Mini game animations are now turned off if using the fancy graphics option. If using is disabled. CPS achievement requirements were dialed down a wee tad. Okay, now April 1st, 2018. August, I mean. <laughs> Getting these numbers and months mixed up. Bye bye bye! I did a heavenly upgrade that lets you buy all your upgrades instantly. That lets you see upgrade tiers. That might be a separate upgrade, but still heavenly. Feature was previously removed due to being confusing. I did a new wrinkler related heavenly upgrade, a new upgrade tier, and a couple new cookies and achievements. New extra button setting. Turning it on will show a confirmation prompt when you spend sugar lumps. Buildings now sell back for 25% of their current price, down from 50%. Earth Shatterer, modified accordingly, now gives 50%, down from 85%. I need to give my finger a rest. Farmer Soils, farm soils rather, now unlock correctly based on current amount of farms. Cheap caps have a new exciting nerf. Wrinkle gear gill spawns a bunch more. Can now control shift click on harvest all to all harvest to only harvest mature non immortal plants. Added a new rare type of sugar lump. Hey now, August eighth, two thousand eighteen. Cookie clicker somehow turns five, going against doctor's most optimistic estimates. I did a new tier of building achievements, all named after Smash, Ma Smash Mouth's classic 1999 hit, All Star. If I'm to sound like Alex Trebek, 1999, as he'd say on Jeopardy. I did a new tier of building upgrades, all named after nothing in particular. 
to our players. Thank you so much for sticking with us all those years and allowing us to keep making the dumbest game known to mankind. <laughs> Resumed work on the Dungeons minigames. I should mention, in all that time, I've also gotten into Jeopardy, finally, in the past year, maybe more. Should I tell the full truth? Maybe another time. But I've been into that show so much anymore. I am loving watching Matt Amodio as much as I love watching old YouTube clips of Alex Trebek <laughs> being on stage. And I'm thinking, it's too bad Alex Trebek isn't on stage with Matt Amodio because that would make the night astronomically more funny. As much as I like watching Mayim Bialik from Big Bang Theory, the get some more thes in there, that that would still be quite the sight. And hearing to hear whatever, quite the viewing experience on TV. Feedback loop, October 25th, 2018. Added a new building, launched our Patreon. This link is orange, so you'll notice it. I certainly did. Okay. I did a bunch of new heavenly upgrades, one of which ties into our Patreon, but benefits everyone. This is still experimental. When hovering over grandmas, you can now see their names and ages. Make X cookies just from Y. Requirements are now honey higher. Tweak the prices of some heavenly upgrades to be to better fit the current cookie economy. Turns out billions of heavenly chips is now very achievable. Building tooltips now display what percentage of CPS they contribute through synergy upgrades. Queen beats now give up to 4% of bank, down from 6%. Among other things, season switches now display how many seasonal upgrades you're missing. And permanent upgrade slots now display the name of the slotted upgrade. Season switches have reworked prices. Can now be cancelled by clicking them again. Can no longer... Now this isn't about season switches anymore. Can no longer accidentally click wrinkles through other elements. Sugar Frenzy now triples your CPS for an hour instead of doubling it. This text is now selectable. Yep, I see it. Which is so much easier now. Progress on Dungeons minigame is still very ongoing. Whoo! So that's that whole bunch. Still a few more to go here. I'm almost done with time. Machine time. Beep, beep. 2019. March 5th. Cookies for days. Added over 20 new cookies, all previously suggested by our supporters on Patreon. Added two heavenly upgrades. The golden goose egg now counts as a golden cookie upgrade for residual luck purposes. Golden sugar lumps now either double your cookies or give you 24 hours of your CPS, which is whichever is lowest. Previously was doubling cookies with no cap. The amount of heralds is now saved with your game and is used to compute offline CPS the next time the game is loaded. Previously on page load, the offline calculation assumed heralds to be zero. I did a system to counteract the game freezing up and not baking cookies. After being ac inactive for a long time while on slower computers, instead this will now trigger sleep mode, during which you still produce cookies as if the game was closed. To enable this feature, Use the sleep mode timeout option in the settings. Vaulting upgrades is now done with shift click as control click was posing issues for Mac users. Made tooltips for building CPS boosts from synergies, hopefully clearer. And I can relate to that Mac issue considering I once had to do a writ assessment, basically a writing essay assignment that gets you out of a English style course in college at Fanshawe because they had Mac keyboard set up with Windows computers. Not a very good combination. So that was fun redoing that on a properly set up computer. 
Anyways, fixed an exploit with Gambler's Fever Dream working across exports and ascensions. Can now hide tooltips in the garden by helping the shift key pressed to make it easier to see where you're planting. Fix the bug with golden cookies reindeer slash reindeer not disappearing properly in some circumstances. The dragon's curve aura should now properly make sugar lumps twice as weird. The control key should less often register incorrectly as pressed. Added a new s add slot in the top right as while our player base is strong and surprised Supportive, supportive as ever. Our ad revenue sometimes fluctuates badly. We may remove the ad again should our income stabilize. Made a few adjustments to make the game somewhat playable in mobile browsers. It's not perfect and can get buggy, but it's functional. You may need to zoom out or scroll around to view the game properly. And I remember that reminds me when Cookie Clicker had a knockoff version on Android, and I think even Apple? It might have it been even just an Apple game. I don't remember exactly for sure, though. Speaking of which, we also got some good progress in the mobile app version. Built from scratch for mobile, so stay tuned. Now, 2.019, the this year update. April 1st, 2019, har har. The game has been renamed to Cookie Clicker to avoid confusion. I thought it was Cookie Clicker before. Can now click the big cookie to generate cookies for free. And I just realized that last update must be not as it seems. Removed fall damage, uh-huh. Oh, duh. Okay, yeah, duh, April 1st, wow. Removed all references to computer animated movie Hoodwinked 2005. Hoodwinked, I should say, because there's an exclamation mark in the title. Mark. Went back in time and invented cookies and computer mice, ensuring Cookie Clicker would one day come to exist. Game now fully compliant with Geneva Conventions. Dropped support for the TI-84 version. Huh. <laughs> ha. Released a low-res retro version of the game, playable here, or to dot dash net dot org slash experiment slash cookie. Mind you, those are all forward slashes. Updated version number. Going off script. September 28th, 2019. Added a new building. Added fortune cookies. A new heavenly upgrade. More upgrades, achievements, etc. Updated the Russian bread cookies icon to better reflect their Cyrillic origins. Stealth update! Or stealth update. The sugar lump refill timeout. Not sugar lump growth. Now no longer ticks down while the game is closed. This fixes an exploit. Also released the official Android version of Cookie Clicker. Playable here. iOS version will come later. Okay, now I'm caught up with that, and oh my crap, that is definitely an official version, which I should totally install. Shame on me for not getting it sooner on my OnePlus One, which is another change in the past many, many years, is I've had a OnePlus One for years. Hopefully many more. Anyways... June 18th, 2020, Making Bank. Beta. Added the stock market mini game, accessible with level 1 banks or above, buy low, sell high. And I want to bring that up in a later segment for particular reasons, or just one reason. Mini games subject to heavy rebalancing over the coming patches. Added a couple heavenly upgrades, including one that lets you pet your dragon. What about tame? Added a new tier of building upgrades and achievements. Reindeer clicks now properly count for shimmering veal. Numbers in scientific notation should display better with short numbers off. Replaced. I believe that is hiragana or katakana in the JavaScript console building display with more accurate hiragana or katakana. 
I can't remember which, I'm sorry. Anyways, again, anyhow, checking account beta. August 8th, 2020. Stock market layout has been revised. Selling stocks no longer increases cookies baked all time. Let's get Eclipse cookies. Stock prices now are are now defined by your highest raw CPS this ascension, which is now displayed in the stats screen. Can no longer buy and sell a stock in the same tick. Warha warehouse space now gains plus 10 per associated building level, up from plus 5. Bank level now improves average and maximum stock values. Later stocks are worth more. Cookie clicker turns 7. So I think that's about three or two more birthdays I missed. Oops. Money me, money now. August 23rd, 2020. Finalized stock market minigame beta. Added and added it to the live, to live version. Dark mode added to stock market minigame, which is probably better because whom on earth uses light mode? Not even in Discord. I love that they make slight fun of you for that. I think. Can no longer select a milk before unlocking it. Milk selector layout has been improved. Stock market goods have higher value caps and a larger spread. Can also shift click the hide buttons to hide slash show all other stocks. And finally, to make this all finally worth it, this segment, alternative Alternate Reality 2020, November 1st. New building, new upgrade tier, new achievement tier, new heavenly upgrades, new modding API, new rebalancing, ascension, ascension slot prices, finger upgrades, new fixes, leap years, ghost swaps, carryover seeds, new stuff. And last but not least, the very namesake of this very episode, give me steam. September 1st, 2021. Cookie Clicker has been released on Steam with music by C418 as I'll play a wee bit here for the sake of copyright avoidance. Okay, now back to the rest of the update. Web version and Steam version will receive the same updates from now on. You can now play in 12 different languages, new option to display scary stuff, basic screen reader support, and various other improvements. Crap, I gotta cut down this whole segment by a crap ton. But the rest, of course, I mean, I just covered the rest, but... You can find the link to the game's store page on Steam. I don't think it's on Epic. I could be wrong. But it is going for $4.99 or 5 bucks USD, $5.69 Canadian or your regional equivalent. Plus, there's the soundtrack by C418 who also composed the Minecraft soundtrack, which is my favorite part about that whole music track there. That C418 made... My most favorite game ever's soundtrack, as well as my most favorite clicker game soundtrack. And it's for the same price. And as of yet, 67,806 is the peak number of players since the Steam release, according to Steam charts. You can also buy Cookie Clicker by C418 on his Bandcamp page. And one last thing before. I end this segment from PC Gamer, which I've also followed in all those years. Well, not all those years, but quite a bunch of them. Steam achievement names can be upsettingly long. Cookie Clicker Discovers by Natalie Clayton, September 6th. Only 5.9% of players have learned about Biscuit Pioneer Adolphus W. Green, apparently. And I'll just make the first two paragraphs. No, I'll leave you to read them up. 
but basically bringing up that the achievement reads there's really no hard limit to how long these achievement names can be and to be quite honest i'm rather curious to see how far we can go adolphius w green 1844 to 1917 started as the principal of the Groton School was that Groton in 1864 actually I can read this from the achievements menu here who am I kidding huh I haven't even unlocked the achievement yet myself oh yeah I kind of can't check that achievement, can I? Through the Steam overlay. What about the global achievements? Maybe it'll show up properly there instead? I don't know. Yes, it does. Okay. Groton indeed. By 1865, he became... Or, in 1864. By 1865, he became second assistant librarian the New York Mercantile or Mercantile Mercantile Library from 1867 to 1869 he was promoted to full librarian from 1869 to 1873 he worked for Everts Southmade and Choate I think that's Choate or Shout Choate a law firm con co-founded not confounded by William M Everts Charles Ferdinand Southmaid and Joseph Hodges Choate. He was admitted to the New York State Bar Association in 1873. Anyway, how's your day been? That's for baking 10 sextillion cookies per second. Which, from the time PC Gamer released the article, was 5.9%, and now it's 30.6% of all Steam users who've played the game have unlocked that achievement so without any further more ado i'm going to skip listener contributions unless some miracle has happened and there have been new recent submissions i don't think so but to be on the safe side of the cookie to not let it crumble upon me nope nothing is there yet so please do send in your listener contributions if you wish to have a question on the show. And I'll read them out or even send in your voicemail, which for now is email only. I have yet to set up SpeakPipe for it because I can only have it really set up for one podcast at a time. I mean, I can set it up for more, but makes it easier if I pay up and have more modules to work with. I think that's how it works. So that will be either cookieconundrum at yahoo.com or conundrumcookie at gmail.com because the other way was taken. And I'm trying to avoid the thes and that didn't even work anyways. And please even feel free to leave whether you think that I should drop the indefinite article, like Game of Thrones did with Ah, or if I should keep it, like has been the case with the past seven episodes. So without any longer time to take, this is going to be a very short segment, but there is something to it here within this thing. Make your wish. This is the generator. So within the generator, I have but one idea that actually surprisingly came to mind, sprung, really. And it's an option to change the your cookie type, which is this very big cookie right here on the left panel of the screen. Because I thought, you know what, it would be neat to have something besides this chocolate chip cookie. So maybe an Oreo, whether royalties can be paid to Mr. Christie for it. Or one of the chips or rainbow ahoy type cookies. Something of the like. Maybe even peanut butter cookies. J just something to spruce things up. I mean, just any of the cookies that appear when you click on the big cookie. Or your cookie as it's called. 
just some sort of toggle so you can personalize it a bit more. That's all I ask for. And finally, the last segment, which I do not have a segment. I do have a segment, but I don't have a bumper for it yet. From around the cookie verse. And these are a couple YouTube videos by the same guy, Bijou Mike, because Cookie Clicker is ruining my life. And then next up is the Grandma Apocalypse has begun, where he apparently just started into Cookie Clicker. And one of the things he covers in his video. Hey guys, I'm a greasy mess. I thought I. Hold on. If I already look like crap. Oh wait, no, I look normal, don't I? <laughs> okay, that's all I'm gonna play. We all look like crap some days. But anyways, he's started on this whole meme of, can I buy your grandma? <laughs> And he has also played in the stock market within Cookie Clicker, which I have yet to find out for myself what that's all about, which I expect is one of these things here. Or maybe not, I don't know. But I have y long yet to get there, and hopefully I will soon. So, that's all the segments I've got for this episode. I thank you for tuning in. And once again... You can follow the podcast. It used to be at TCC Pod. Now it is at Conundrum Cookie because the other way was taken already. And the Cookie Conundrum does not fit on Twitter. So you can follow the podcast there. Send in your submissions once again to conundrumcookie at gmail.com or cookieconundrum at yahoo.com. Do let me know if you want the the back, the indefinite article. And also please do send in your ideas for the game as with the generator segment. And hopefully I'll have a speak pipe module set up soon with a link to that soon. Trademark attached. Anyways, I thank you for tuning in. This has been a much longer episode than expected, but so many updates to go through, and hopefully the next time I record an episode, there might be another update. Or not. Or another episode. Or not. So, without any further ado, keep clicking those cookies. You can find this podcast, hopefully, on your favorite player. Even YouTube, of course. This has been your host, Nathaniel, aka JBJ Blaze. Keep crunching those cookies, because this podcast is crunched out for this episode. Good night, and bye-bye. Bloop.